Amelia, uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you're a professional subtitler. Uh, could you tell us what exactly is it that you do every day? Every day. On an everyday basis, basically. On an everyday basis. You wake up, well, have your coffee, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I wake up um, uh, and start working, and then around two o'clock, I remember that I haven't brushed my teeth. You know, <laughs> in your pajamas. But in my pajamas, <laughs> yes, all that. But uh, no, is that I, Monday to Friday or Monday? No, no, <laughs> it varies, which is which is why I like it, which is why I'm a freelancer. Uh, I either do my own subtitling, uh, or I do some proofreading for somebody else, or I maybe I translate a script, or prepare a dialogue list, or do some SDH subtitling, or anything like that, and or I go to the news and sports subtitling at one of the the, the sort of second uh, public broadcast uh, public broadcaster TV station in Denmark. All right, because you so, work mainly for TV broadcasters. M mainly for for th th for that TV broadcaster or for uh, subtitling companies. Are these local I, companies or international companies? Or both? This is uh, th my main. Uh, the main company I mainly work for is a Swedish company, which is actually run by the subtitlers. It is owned and run by the subtitlers themselves. We can, I think we can say the name. Uh, Svensk Media Text. If somebody's interested. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. Um, so you, that, it can happen. You can do it. They formed uh, a limited company and, uh, and run it. All right. And what are your languages? My languages are English and Swedish and Norwegian. So it's not a very impressive list. Uh, Is I, it not? But it's well, into Danish or not? Into Danish and then I translate into English as well. And if I have to, I'll translate from Swedish into English as well. Okay. But, but that's it. But those are sort of my in-depth languages and there's a few others, but just enough to get by, not enough to translate. Okay, and I was wondering um, what software you use. Uh, is it PC based? Is PC it cloud based, cloud based as well? It's PC based because it's important to be able to keep a copy of your work. It has it has to do with author's rights as well, uh, and you are allowed to keep a copy of your work. There's a there's a something of a clash there going on between the cloud based uh, companies and and the. The translators themselves so it's important to be aware of that all right so you keep a copy of uh, the work that is the final uh, work that you did after QC or is it before QC well, uh, um, it, it, that depends really uh, I'm not allowed to resell that obviously it belongs to the client if I were given the same program or the same film from a different, it's a bit theoretical, but if I give that by a different client, I could rework it. I would have to rework it substantially, but as you know, when you work in translation, they are translations are never the same. You do it again, you do it differently. That's right. Do you so, have a system of classifying your files? I'm wondering, uh, is it final? Uh, the um, what do you say, like, how do you name your files? No, but the thing is that, that when I finish a file, it goes to the proofreader. And if I'm very lucky, it'll go to somebody who's, who's also watching the movie and then proofreading so that you, you get that aspect as well. But this, this uh, QCing, where the QC corrects a lot of stuff, and may or may not ask you about it is, is something I am dead against. It also has to do with author's rights. Who has the, the copyright to this, uh, well, not the copyright, the client has that, but who has the author's rights to this piece of work if it's been changed substantially by a QC -er? And, and the, the, the translator doesn't really have a say in this. That's right. So the, so the author's rights are with the subtitler, obviously not with the QCer, right? Well, but if the QC makes a bunch of changes, then where are, where are we? Um, but it, it is assumed that uh, since I'm given the job, that I can do the job, I have the experience. So what is needed is a proofreader and, like I said, in a really good situation, a colleague of some kind to also review the, 
you know, in context with the, with the movie or the program. Um, so then it's simple. Right. But if you, but it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different um, uh, thing, but we, I could cover it now if you want me to, because this briefly, is... Yes, that, briefly, yes. Briefly. If you take in um, translators and you don't really feel that you have the time to train them or the, you know, or the resources, you, you, you get somebody and they don't have the experience, you haven't given them the necessary tools and the necessary experience then you have somebody with slightly more experience who, who's, who's then editing their job to the point where it's acceptable or maybe even another layer of QCing. Um, and um, I think it's not good for the product and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an author's rights mess and it's part of uh, de-skilling our profession. Is that what it's called? Yes, de-skilling. You know, and it happens. It's happening in a lot of professions. It's not unique to ours, but um, but it's a it's a very problematic thing, I think. Yes, and I was wondering, uh, talking about the uh, authorship, uh, do you get royalties uh, um, as subtitlers? Yes, then there. It's, what's it called? Well, it's author's rights remuneration. All right. Oh. Yes. So you I, need, I, I, don't, good, yes. I think royalties in, in a European context actually is, a, is not precise enough. Don't ask me. Okay. Don't All right. Me. Let's not I get into that. I am not an expert on author's rights, but I do know that they're important. Yes, we do get them. We used to share them out in, in like equal sized portions just because it was easier. But we now have to comply in Denmark, we have to comply with EU regulation and the money has to go to each, to the individual, according to certain rules of how often it's viewed and you know, how many people see yes. it okay. and all so the rest of it. it, is, it is but we're having, we're having problems with that. Yes. It's, not, it's not that easy. Yeah, I can imagine that. Um, I wanted to go back to um, uh, the actual subtitling. Mm. Um, you said you mainly work for uh, television. Uh, I, I do do some uh, th theatrical releases, uh, movies. Uh -huh. Is television subtitling different to other yes. types of subtitling? Yes. How is yes. that? Well, um, there's, there's several kinds really, but if we take uh, films, theatrical releases, as opposed to TV subtitling. When you're in the when you're in a movie theater, you're focused entirely on the screen. There's, there are no distractions unless you want to turn around and hiss at somebody who's talking too much, you know. But but that's it. So uh, uh, reading speed is faster, um, and there's also a slight difference in Denmark. There's a slight difference in how you. Uh, um, instead of having like a little dialogue dash uh, for each line, if two people are talking to each other. For some reason, there's only a, a dash at the bottom for I one see. of the people speaking. So that's, that's a, a quite tiny thing about uh, Danish, uh, but mainly it's the reading speed that you can get away with more because people are focused on it. You can't get away with it, everything, you know, but you can get away yes. with more. Okay, that, that's super interesting. And, um, and uh, sorry, and they, uh, if, just to finish that, for, for TV, you know, people have all kinds of distractions. You need, you need a, a, a longer reading speed. And when you are subtitling for a public service broadcaster, you have to remember that you're subtitling for everybody. You're subtitling for the 16-year-old who is really good at English and is watching some, something they know already something about and you're subtitling for people who just came home from work and are super tired and they're 50 something and you're subtitling for 83 year olds who's and, and something just very physical happens your eye movements are not yeah, that and rapid. you're only allowed one set of subtitles right <laughs> exactly <laughs> so so you have to try and hit a, 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 a median where you can um, you know, deliver the translation to as many people as possible. All right, yes. Um, you're from Scandinavia, mm. and Scandinavia has a long-standing subtitling tradition. Yes. Uh, yes. Is this tradition different to other countries, would you say? Um, it's, it's so much longer <laughs> than... But um, it depends which country you go to, and it's surprising which countries 
would actually go for dubbing even though the market is quite small and so on. Um, but it's a very long tradition, so we've had a long time to try out what works and what doesn't work. So if you can imagine uh, almost 90 years of, I think it's got to be 90 years, of common sense. Common sense trial and error. So of course we've arrived at something that, and then backed up by later results, scientific results. But, but we, I think we've arrived at something that, that we like. Yes, and you've actually compiled it in a oh, set yes, of standards. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit well, about it, this? Well, it started in, in Norway uh, because we, we just work and we, we do according to our standards because we all know them, so we don't have to worry about it. But suddenly there is all this pressure. Uh, people saying, no, no, it's fine, we can do it this way. Uh, so we formalized our standards in a way and they started doing this in Norway and this is not just the subtitles saying we know best it's got to be like this this is all the stakeholders in a particular country in a particular market signing off on the guidelines so that basically what the Norwegians started and it's a very good thing is anything that everyone cannot agree on if everyone is not agreed it doesn't go in the guidelines but you found enough things to put in the They, they did, um, and this has made it so much easier for the rest of us. So there was Norway, and now there's Dan the Danish standards are in place, or the guidelines, because we try not to say they're rules or standards, and if you don't comply with them, you're just, you know, <laughs> substandard yourself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, ostracized. <laughs> they are guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, but they do make a difference, and it does make a difference that, that all the stakeholders and this is like companies, practitioners, academics, uh, organ various organizations. Yes, that's important for, for the quality. Part right? of hearing. It's very important for quality. And, and you, you don't have to do miles of explanation. It's like, here's a link. Yes, just read it. Have, have and, a look and they're simple. It's not, it's not complicated at all. I wanted to also ask you about a little bit of history. Uh, you've been working for um, a few years now. <laughs> 30 years, I just realized. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, would you say the, uh, the profession has changed in any way since you started? Yes. yes. What were the changes? Um, there, there is, uh, there's a lot more pressure. Now, like and time I did, pressure. I, yeah. the, the time constraints, yeah. And I did not start at the uh, sort of plummy end of the market. Uh, I started at the, the thin end of the wedge in a way. Um, when when um, the, the market was opened up to a lot of commercial, much more commercial TV at the end of the 80s. So, um, but still, the pressure now is so much greater. The um, fees have not gone up either in uh, some fees have not gone up in real terms really you know it's yeah with infl inflation yes uh, or it's they, they haven't followed suit with with the rising cost of in, in in not in any way what we find in Denmark and in 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 other countries is that the countries that have an association an active association or a union uh, where people, you know, are members, like an organised uh, market, they tend to do better in terms of fees. All right. So, so it does make nice. a difference. Yes. <laughs> it does <laughs> make a difference. Yeah. So the, the pressure's on, you have to, the deadlines are shorter and shorter. You know, clients are making more and more unreasonable demands, really. Um, so you really have to be quick and you really have to think on your feet. And, um, you know, they want 24 episodes of something by next week. And then you go, okay, how many people can do this? How many people can do two episodes? How many can do three? You know, and then you have to coordinate. Yeah, for so consistency. For consistency, it's very and important. Quality. And uh, in terms of technology? Well, in terms of technology, lots of nice things have happened, you know, uh, that digitization uh, makes everything so much simpler. Um, it, it, it puts a little bit of a burden on the translator because you're expected to have your own everything. But also, you have it and, and you can say, and I think you'd be well advised to say, I work on this. 
you know, you need something that's flexible, and you say, I work on this, and, and just don't accept any old cloud-based nonsense from just anybody. And also, if they say, we use this, we use this, we use this, you have, if you're a true freelancer, you have a couple of clients, three clients, four clients, they all have different software they want you to use. And that is just a waste of time. Right, when you can actually produce something with when you your can own produce software. Something, that yes, is which is tried quality. and tested and good. Sometimes you look at these and they're all engineer based solutions, you know, and you look at the interface, or whatever, you, you look at it and you go, who right. invented this? You yeah. know, what Without is this tiny little thing? <laughs> set of numbers which I have to read every time I want to check how many frames I have, you know. Oh, right. yeah. It's ludicrous. Yeah, I but, see. You know. So apart from being a professional subtitler, you're not so, I would say, activist, if I may oh, yes. use uh, oh, the yes. word. Well, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, the, about this and the, the organization or organizations that mm. you're involved in? Well, I, I'm, um, I head up the, the Danish subtitlers, a group in the Danish Union of Journalists. And it's a big advantage to belong to a proper union. Um, and this, of course, is going to become easier and easier uh, as, as uh, freelancers are no longer falsely, in my opinion, compared to, uh, to businesses. E um, you know, that if you're a freelancer and you, you have your own your one-man business, you, you know, it's the same as a giant corporation. Of course it's not the same. So that, that uh, this, is, this is improving and uh, it's encouraging freelancers to organize more and more. So that's really good. Um, but the thing is, the thing about a union is they have negotiators, um, you have uh, legal assistance, you have all kinds of things. If you have a strong association, um, they can also uh, have a lot of these things. And a, but a union also has money in case you need to say, no, I'm not, you know, we are all not taking any jobs for this company. Uh, we're declining uh, the jobs because the fees are simply too awful or the, or the deadlines or whatever. Then this is what happens when people go on strike. The union will compensate uh, the major part of, of your income uh -huh. so that you don't have to starve. Okay. Yeah. So this awesome. is this is why I think, and if you have a strong association, it may have it may have funds. The Norwegian association is just an association, but it does have funds and so on. Depends. It varies from country to country. But the reason I know about all these different countries is we have a European federation, which is like the umbrella organization, uh, where all the different uh, associations and organizations are uh, represented. And uh, in some countries, there's in France, there's two. So uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be a single association from each country. There can be several, even. Several, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, more to so we, we meet, we communicate, we exchange information. We also talk to people and corporations and institutions as AVTE, as Audiovisual Translators Europe, instead of as our individual um, organizations and that is and a your huge voice help. is stronger our voice is so much stronger because if you know we are 15 countries 16 countries now and um, that's just a lot more than than one country that's right and um, um, it's easier we're a stronger voice but it's a lot easier for the people you talk to as well it's not just us coming out in force you know it was we, we're not we're not going to frighten anybody anyway, but it's a lot easier for them to deal with, like half the European countries, uh, in in one conversation. It's just so much easier. How do you see uh, the relationship between practitioners, professional tra translators, subtitlers, and researchers? Is there a way we can help uh, each other? Is there anything we can do for each other? Um, a lot, I think. There's a lot we can <laughs> do for each other. Yes. No, I think the, the problem has been that uh, initial studies or small studies or 
studies showing a tendency to maybe something or other have been uh, utilized, taken by companies who then say, well, look, this has happened. You know, it's like it's already finished. It's there. Yeah. Or uh, just read the title and then. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and now that this has happened, uh, we implement this and this will, your, your, you can work so much faster and we can, we'll reduce your fees by 25 to 30%. It's always 25 to 30% for some reason. <laughs> you know, just like in dictatorships, the people who go, come out to vote for the dictator is always 97 percent all right it's never so our, our research is uh, to blame for no <laughs> not not entirely but um no no of course not because people can appropriate your results and do basically what they want with them but what would be fantastic i think for practitioners um is is research in more lifelike situations um, you mean uh, in the context where you watch, like at home, yes, on the sofa? Yes, or certainly, certainly something like that, yeah. Because, and I would say, if, if, if researchers imposed on themselves like a little ban on using students, just like for two, three years, just to see what happens, because students are young, they're sharp, they're fast, and they're eager to please. That's true. That, yeah, that's it, like I think most research is done on psychology students in psychology departments, right? <laughs> Something like that, you know. And it, it, it does, you know, like I said, subtitling for a public service broadcaster, you get, you have to be able to reach so many different people. All the age groups as well. All the know. age groups, all the different, um, if, you know, physical things that happen as you age or if you have uh, some kind of disability as well. There's so much to think about. And um, reading speed, of course, is the big uh, thing for us because we are constantly told, you can just up the reading speed, who cares, they can follow it, it doesn't matter. And they actually, people actually cannot. They can do it for a minute, two minutes, show them a clip, they're young, they're intelligent, they're used, they, you know, it's Game of Thrones or something they're used to. Of course they can follow it, but that's not a real-life situation. A, a, a much more realistic situation is you come home from work and you're, you know, anywhere from your 20s to your 80s and you're exhausted. I know people in their 80s don't work, but unless they're freelancers, of course. <laughs> might, yeah. <laughs> you come home from work and you're, you know, 20 to 65 and you're exhausted and you want to watch something and there's all kinds of things competing for your attention, um, anything yeah, and the, from the children films to are anything. Longer, right? and, and, and you, watch for, you yeah. watch for an hour, you watch for an hour and a half. And, and if you keep up the, if you use that example, the reading speed, if you keep up the super reading speed all the way through, then people can't yeah, follow it. The attention, I just the, uh, yes, attention span. You, like you can't. Mm -hmm. Not at optimum attention for right. you know an hour and a half for yeah. two minutes. Not a problem. Yeah, yeah. So so, so those are the sort of things that would be s fantastic for for practitioners. Yes, yeah, so more uh, ecological validity. I think the researchers would call it. <laughs> yes, you know, and and more possibly. I'm not sure, but possibly more qualitative. Um, studies not Where on you, the numbers but on, on actual translations that what you mean on translation yes, yes, solutions and, and how and because how it's difficult it's to received. quantify yeah on it is difficult to quantify although Jan Peterson has, yes. has taken steps <laughs> with his bar model um, so we're very we're thrilled about that of course because it's a real yeah, it's, it's a fantastic the first initial important step. measurement yeah. on interlingual subtitling yes isn't it? yes yes so so the quantifying is very important, to be able to quantify uh, simply to, to be able to answer all those questions, you know, where's the, where's the scientific uh, study that supports this? So, so that's important, but I think, I think qualitative uh, interviews are also important. I'm not sure, because when you, when you study the eye tracking and all that, you see people doing the opposite of what yeah, they're yeah, saying. You have to combine it with other yes. data, it's like yes. eye tracking. So that is also what can researchers, uh, what can practitioners, how can they benefit researchers? And, and this is, I, I was kind of 
what can we do? Maybe you would like to tell me. That. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, uh, we want to know what uh, needs to be researched, right? Because we can, we tend to research things that nobody's interested in, right? Um, so that's, I think yeah. that's, a, that's a big problem. So yeah. uh, I suppose we just need to talk to each other more yes. at conferences like uh, today. Like this one at yes. Intermediate. Okay. okay, thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. For, uh, Thank for you for coming. talking to me. <laughs> Thank you.